Hello, everyone, and a welcome to today's webinar, Maximizing Accuracy in Your Construction Estimates. This webinar is brought to you by Applied Software Great Tech Group. My name is Misty Scott, and I am pleased to be your moderator. We'll begin with a quick intro video on how to get the most out of this webinar and interact with us today. Here we go. Hi, and welcome to this Applied Software webinar. We're glad you could join us today. Get more out of the webinar by clicking on the icons at the bottom of your screen. You can resize these. This button leads to resources. This button adjusts the volume. Just don't push this one. I'm watching you. Be sure to find Applied Software on social media and on our website, asti.com, where we'll empower you to discover what's possible. You can also find a complete schedule of upcoming events, on-demand webinars, and training on our calendar at asti.com slash calendar. This is being recorded for your convenience. You'll be receiving an email with the recording link for future reference. And make sure to stick around. We'll answer questions at the end. See you there. All right. As the video mentioned, you can find a schedule of upcoming events, webinars and training on our calendar at asti.com slash calendar. So absolutely check that out. I am pleased to introduce our speaker today. Mark Petrucci is an implementation consultant, construction with Applied Software Gray Tech Group. In this role, Mark is a trusted technical advisor to our clients in providing technical expertise and strategic insight for a diverse architecture, engineering, construction, and a building owner customer base. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mark. All right. Thanks for having me. And for those attending, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, feel free to plug them in the Q&A. We will have time to answer them at the end. And I'm sure some of you have seen in the lobby, we've got a fantastic BIM Up conference going on. Um, it is going to be in May. So make sure you register for that. You can take out your phone, scan the QR code, and register for that today. Um, awesome. Perfect. I will turn it over to you, Mark. Great. All right. Thank you. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. And we'll go ahead and start the presentation. And Missy, do you see my presentation? I sure do. I see, um, well, let's see. I see it says packages on it. Uh, let me go ahead and stop sharing. Let me do that if we can, just in case. Boom. And I'll go ahead and share screen again. And we're going to go ahead and share Chrome tab. Oh, gotcha. Okay. There we go. Entire screen. That's where it is. Okay. Um, so I want to make sure I got the correct screen here, which is not yep, the correct I see screen. It. <laughs> you do I see, see it? it? All yes, right. I'll tell you what. I'm going to do this then. And uh, I'm going to swap it because that is the wrong screen. It's uh, I want to show one other one here. Sorry, everyone. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Um, very strange. It wants to do my other screen, so I will I will just go with it. Uh, let's do this here. We'll do Chrome tab, and we'll do this one. Technology is picky. Yeah, it is. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. So, um, do you see my Autodesk Construction Cloud screen now? That I do. Uh -huh. Okay, great. All right, perfect. All right, so let's go ahead, guys, and we'll jump into the webinar. Uh, today, we're going to talk about, you know, what is Autodesk Takeoff. I'm going to focus on takeoff when it comes to accuracy uh, with our estimates. So, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Construction Cloud. Um, I'm going to do a live demo. So, but I want I want to show you some slides on the on the preparation side, kind of kind of getting things ready. So, we'll Mark, start can I interrupt yep. you really quickly? I'm sorry. Yep. I see the I see the um, I see where it says Autodesk Construction Cloud, but I don't see any slides. Oh, <laughs> thanks. I see we'll the browser this. that says Autodesk Construction Cloud. 
Got it. All right. For some reason, it's just um, it just wants to be finicky today. Let's do this one more time here. Um, when I select the entire screen, oh, I see here. Okay. Now I have the choice to pick screen number two. There we go. All right. There we go. So now you should see the Autodesk Construction Cloud and the agenda, right? Yes, I see the agenda. Yep. Great. All right. So we'll talk about what is Autodesk Takeoff. Uh, we'll go through project setup. Now I'll do the classification system and the sheets and models. We'll do that in the PowerPoint, but then for the package part of it, I'll actually do that live. Um, so you see some other stuff here where I'll talk about the takeoff viewer, uh, the live demonstration. I will create some packages. I'll um, do some takeoffs on some sheets and some models, and then we'll finish off with the inventory in the reporting section. And then if there's any questions uh, afterwards, uh, please let me know. So real quick, what is takeoff? Um, takeoff you're gonna is basically, we're just counting objects. Um, it's, it comes under different names like material takeoff, quantity takeoff, uh, but basically we're just counting the amount of material that we need to complete a construction project. Now, some people will confuse that with estimating. Estimating is different. Estimating is the process of adding cost to, to those materials that we need for the job site. Um, we can also include in the, with the cost of the material, we can include the, the labor to install it and any equipment that is needed for installation of the material. But with Autodesk Takeoff, it, we are going to be quantifying materials. Um, we are not doing estimates, but we'll be able to take that takeoff and export it out to generate an estimate, uh, estimate outside of Autodesk Takeoff. Um, who uses takeoff? Typically, that's your estimators and your contractors. Now, for those teams that are using Revit models, you know, they can get quantities out of Revit, but typically those are your designers and your engineers. Um, they're not doing takeoffs per se. It's The Autodesk takeoff tool is made for estimators and contractors who don't know Revit or CAD, but they're receiving maybe construction documents possibly even even models. And without knowing Revit or CAD, they'll be able to use this tool to get some takeoffs. Now, in history, the way we've done takeoffs is we've done it on by hand on paper. We would receive a document and then we would highlight it with different color markers and highlighters to kind of note what we've already counted. Today, we kind of up it a little bit with PDF documents. With PDF documents, you can color up the PDF document with you know different colored lines and shapes. Um, so just to let us know that we've counted the object. With a model, that's where things start to separate a little bit. So with the 3D model, we can actually generate a takeoff based on the objects that have been created in the model. Now, in a typical model, you know, we've got, let's say, of, of a building, you've got walls, windows, and doors. You've got the concrete um, pad. Um, you've got the materials, you know, that make up the, the, the wall, you know, the, the studs, the insulation, maybe plastic, vapor barrier. That information is not actually modeled. You know, the, the architect will model a wall and, and give it a name but it won't actually have all the little pieces and parts that are required to build that wall. Now, there are tools out there that allow us to put in all those individual parts if needed, um, but those can make the files extremely large. So typically with designers, they're generating these models that, that have a level of intelligence to it, but it may not have every little nut and bolt or every screw that is required you know, for construction of the project. But that's okay because the way estimators have done this for years is they have formulas that said, all right, if I have a wall and it's made up of these, uh, it, and it's this long, but it's made up of metal stud and gypsum wall board, um, I can calculate just how much metal stud I need and how many uh, gypsum wall panels I need. And so there's formulas to help us calculate that. And we can calculate counts, length, area, and volume, all from our our uh, models. Now I am going to talk about takeoff. Takeoff is part of the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Now you can use takeoff if you're an estimator 
or a contractor, you can just use takeoff, you know, for yourself. However, in the grand scheme of things, you know, we want a project where we've got the designers, the engineers, the pre-con, the construction teams, they're all part of the Autodesk Construction Cloud. And by doing that, then it's easy for us to kind of share information and collaborate back and forth. And so one thing you'll notice here, these are the, are the four main modules, if you will, of the construction cloud. We have document management, we have BIM Collaborate and BIM Collaborate Pro, Takeoff, and we have Build. And what you'll notice is that the Collaborate tools, Takeoff and Build, they all have access to docs. So if your design if the design team is working with docs, they've had the models here or their CAD drawings, that's accessible by the designers, the pre-con teams. It's also accessible by the estimators. No need for emailing files back and forth, setting up permissions and controlling how people access files. Estimators using takeoff can access whatever files that they're given permission to see to start doing takeoffs. So let's talk a little bit about project setup. There's really eight main points for setting up a project to do takeoff. You know, we're going to log into the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Then from there, we're going to create a project. We're going to invite members to the project. Uh, we'll control and we'll set up what people can see and what they can do in the project. Then we'll configure specific settings for Autodesk Takeoff. Now, once we configure those settings, the next step is to get some drawings or some models to do takeoffs on them. So we can publish 2D files or we can publish a 3D model. And then once I get the files and the models up in the cloud, now I can start creating packages. So I'll create a package specifically for counting, you know, maybe concrete for my, my structural foundation, uh, my footings. Maybe I'll create a package for counting my electrical fixtures. Um, so I can create a package to help to help organize what I decide to count. So once I create my packages, then I'll begin with quantity takeoff. And then once I start or once I finish counting everything I need to count, then I can finish off by exporting out an inventory of everything I counted to a report or to an Excel file, which then can by can be used by any estimating program out there. So being able to export out to Excel will make it, uh, make it available to any estimating tool and any estimator uh, for, for use for calculating their estimates. So real quick, logging in. Again, everybody go to acc.autodesk.com. That's what you want to do is you want to log in to ACC. Uh, you'll put in your email address, your typical Autodesk password. You do need to purchase or have a license of Autodesk Takeoff to use. And once you do that, you can log in and you'll have Takeoff available. Now, next step, whenever anybody logs in, they'll be brought over here to a project list. They will see all of the projects they've been invited to. By the way, notice this project list shows the newer Autodesk Construction Cloud file format, as well as the older BIM 360 platform. For those people that are still logging into docs.b360.autodesk.com, you know, you don't need to do that anymore. You can simply log in here, use acc.autodesk.com, and you will get access to your old projects as well as the new projects. Now, the last step is to create a project for, for takeoff. Now, we'll do that with account admin, but I'm not actually going to go through those steps. I, I have other videos to show you how to create projects. In this example, I'm going to say that I've already created a project. So we'll go in there and we'll take a look at some of the settings that need to be configured to be able to use Autodesk Takeoff on a project. So first thing you'll notice is when I logged into a project, um, I'm in the docs mode, document management mode, and I have a number of folders set up and then files that have been uploaded. Maybe I've got some Revit and CAD files uploaded to my uh, folders, or maybe I have some PDF files. But I'm going to switch over to Takeoff, and when I select on Takeoff, it will open up a different user interface. But, again, remember Docs and Takeoff, they work together. Docs is my document management. Takeoff is my tool specifically to do my quantity takeoffs. 
So mainly switching from docks to takeoff is as simple as just selecting it off the menu. Now that I'm inside a takeoff, I have my navigation menu on the left-hand side. Um, I have a I have three buttons down here to help me get started. It's kind of a wizard, if you will. So the first thing it wants me to do is define a, cla a classification system. Then it will take me through uploading files. And it really should say upload or publish 2D or 3D files. And then I will create my packages. So the first four steps I'll just do here in the slideshow. At starting at step five is when I'll go live. So what I'll do is I'm going to first start out with creating a classification system. Now, when I select classification system, it's actually going to switch me over to packages and it's going to put me into settings. And from here, I decide on how I want to quantify objects using what, what uh, measurement system, imperial or metric. Well, being in the U.S., we'll use imperial. Then I want to uh, enter a classification system. By default, takeoff does not have a classification system preloaded, so you need to load one. And it's a matter of just simply uploading an Excel spreadsheet. So you'll notice when I select classification system, it says, um, right down here, it says upload. And what Autodesk will provide is a, a template file. You can download this template file and then um, fill it out and then re-upload it. And then you would import your, your custom classification system. Now, I've already gone ahead and I've loaded a couple of them here. Like in this example, I have the Uniformat classification system. And you can see it on the right-hand side. So you can see how that is set up. But a nice feature that could be really helpful for some teams is if you need a second uh, classification system. So you do have that option. You don't have to use it. But if you do now, when you start doing your quantity takeoffs, you can assign them to two different classification systems should you choose. Here are three examples of some classification systems that I've uploaded to take off. Uniformat being the first one, then the master format, and then finally the OmniClass table 23. And you can see the formats are a little bit different, but in reality, it's just a way for me to organize the objects that, are, that I'm counting. So later when I go to generate a report, I can filter and sort based on whichever classification system I use. So getting back over into my classification uh, settings page. Now that I've configured this, I'm going to come back over and click on the home button. So now we're going to talk about uploading and publishing 2D sheets. So when you click on home, it takes you back and you can see a green checkbox that you've finished um, defining the classification system. The next step now is to upload or publish sheets. Now when I select on this, it's actually going to take me right over here to sheets. So I'll pick on it. Now Sheets and Models is selected. You'll see that, that I have the option I can upload files. Now when you select the blue button to upload files, it basically wants you to go to select the file somewhere on your computer or maybe on your network. But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of the Autodesk Construction Cloud. The Sheets and Models section okay, is what I load here is what is going to be used by takeoff. This is where all of my takeoffs, my highlighted objects that I'm going to count, they will all be performed on anything under sheets and models. However, the file section here, the file section is taking me back over to docs. And I have files that I've already uploaded to the file section. Um, in a perfect world, the designers are working in the file section. They're working in the doc section. They have their models up there already. So there's nothing more for you to do except if you have permission to do it, you go grab a file and you say, all right, I'm going to publish it into takeoff. So it will take the files from anything from the file section and pull it into sheets and models. So let's first, uh, and this is just a slide telling you about I could upload files, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to publish now. So the way I would do that is if I switch over to files, and actually just another slide I forgot I created, uh, that I'm going to publish. 
takes me into the file section. From here, I can go to any folder, and then I can select on the file that I wish to publish. Oops, go back a slide. So it could be a Revit model. It could be a PDF file. Those are the only two file formats that Takeoff will accept. But I do want to remind you again, here is Autodesk Takeoff. Here is Files. And then notice my list of folders. If I actually go back into Docs, notice you have the same, and I go to Files, I have the same folders listed here as I do here because both Docs and Takeoff share the same common data environment. So you could almost change this and say takeoff and docs, you know, they're 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 built into each other. Anyways, all I do is I select on the file and as soon as I select the file, you'll see the option that says publish. And it specifically tells you publish to take off sheets and models. Now this says a Revit model, but I'm going to show you first an example of a PDF file. So this is the workflow you'll see when you upload a PDF file. When you grab a, I, I, I should say, publish a PDF file. When you grab a PDF file from the file section and, and then publish it here to take off, it's going to want you to assign it a version set name and a date. From there, you, it'll proceed on to the next few screens. Now, this is letting you know, it says, hey, if you've got any markups in those, those uh, documents, the PDF, I'm not going to bring those over. So this provides the estimator a nice clean set of sheets to work with. Now, once the next step that you'll see in here is the step where it's going to go through and it's going to scan every sheet for a sheet number. And typically it will scan the lower right corner of the screen. Now you'll notice I purposely renumbered this one to, to force an error. So it says sheet, this says sheet A102, but I wrote A101. And when I did that, it says sheet number duplicates, sheet number duplicated in this list. It will not let you upload duplicate sheet numbers. And it shows me that I've got two sheets and if necessary, maybe they're spread out, you know, they're not right next to each other like these two are. You can actually click on this button and it will allow you to filter and sort this list to only show you those sheets with errors. When there are errors, it will not let you proceed. So this button is grayed out right now. If I look at another set of drawings, notice this drawing is simply labeled as I4. And this one down here doesn't have a sheet number. It's missing. And that's because in this PDF, somebody put a few sheets in there that just had like some 3D renderings. Well, I don't need those for estimating. In that particular case, I could simply highlight both of those sheets and I could say remove them. Now, if you look right down here, it says next to titles and tags. It says here sheet extraction is completed. Next to titles and tags to continue publishing. Uh, I usually tell people it's like, well, hold on, because you want to double check, making sure that all the numbers make sense. So for example, notice here this sheet number, it actually is a date. And it, for some reason, it picked up the middle of the sheet instead of the lower right corner. So that's actually wrong. The system doesn't know that it's wrong. So it's important that you just kind of proof everything. So to correct it, it's just a matter of selecting on the file and then coming up here and say, draw sheet number area. And you're going to tell it where to find the sheet number. When I select on that, it will open up a window. And I'm just going to quickly jump through here and select this button, which says, all right, define the, the, the sheet number area. So I'll zoom in and I will simply with this tool, draw a rectangle to include the sheet number. And then when I hit save, it will kick me back out. It'll spend about 10 seconds scanning and then it'll put in the correct sheet number for me. Now I'll proceed on to titles and tags. When I go to titles and tags, you know, sometimes it'll pick up the sheet title. Sometimes it misses it. First thing I would do is right down here, adjust the row height. If you slide this bar over, you can see now you can see four or five different sheets um, on the screen. Then you can select all of them and then select the button that says draw sheet title area. And just like we did the sheet number before, 
I'm going to use this button right here to, to come in here and define what the title is. And then I'll save it. And now it went through and scanned all my sheets. And now I can come over here and hit Publish Sheets. Now, this part here, I purposely wanted to do this in the PowerPoint because when you publish the sheets, um, that depending on the number there are, that's where it could take the most amount of time. And it might be just a couple minutes or it could be maybe, you know, five or ten minutes, all depending on the number of sheets. But then you end up with a list of all the sheets that you can start using for takeoff. As far as uploading and publishing a 3D model, that's pretty easy. We'll come over here to 3D Models. Come over to Files, select your Revit models, and I could select multiple ones. Select Publish, and right now those models have been published from Docs over here into Takeoff. So I can do whatever I want with the models here. I'm not affecting the models that are over within the Docs, Autodesk, and Document Management. And finally, the last step is to create a package. And so you'll notice the green checkbox, I've now finished uploading files. So the next step here is to create some packages. So I've got some packages already created, but I'll go through some steps to show you how they work and then how we can take advantage of the packages. So let's jump over into a live demo. All right, I'm currently logged into the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Okay. For those of you that may have noticed today, and I noticed it for the first time today, um, this, this wasn't the case last week and I was not in yesterday, but I see here that Autodesk has added a column here <clears throat> for us to quickly decide on which program to use depending on the file we want. Um, I'm going to type in takeoff. I'm going to search for a project that I have in here called ASCII takeoff training project. And I don't want to go into build first. I'm going to go right to takeoff. So that's a new feature. It looks like it just popped up um, maybe over the weekend or maybe today. All right. So I've defined the classification system. I've uploaded some sheets. And then I've already created some packages, but I'll show you the, that again. Um, if I come over to Sheets and Models, here's I've got uh, 22 sheets that I've uploaded, excuse me, that I've published. Uh, I also have some of these that have different version sets. So A102 was modified, and so I've got multiple versions of that sheet. Next, you'll see the Revit models in which I've uploaded. And now I'll come over to Packages. So I've already got some packages created here, and you can see how I've organized them. Um, you know, I, I gave them a number code. And then I've also, you know, labeled what I'm counting. Um, to create a package, it's fairly simple. You come over here and create a package, and I'll put in uh, I'll put in here 4.0, and I'll just put in here test package, and I'll hit create package. But now I've got a test package down here. Now what I want you to notice is, no matter what package I select, when I pick on it. I will get access to the same 25 sheets and models that I have uploaded to take off. Okay. Now, what the package, if I proceed on and I come down here to take off types, this is completely blank right now. There's no take off types. This is a brand new package that I created. What I will do though is I'm going to switch over to my walls. And you're going to see the same, oops the same list of documents. Now, from here at the top, you can see um, this is my version sets. I first uploaded the sheets on October 13th, and I just called it V1. And then on April 4th, I have my work in progress files that I uploaded. Uh, if I want to switch to a different package, I can, because maybe now I'm going to count walls, but later I'm going to um, count HVAC. Go back into walls. For select document, basically this is the same list of documents that you see here. So, But what I'm going to do instead is from here I can search for specific documents that I want to count on. So maybe if I want to look for anything 
you know, related to uh, the ground floor. If I type in ground, you can see I found different sheet numbers all having the word ground on, in it. I can also filter and say, you know what? I only want to do some takeoffs on my 3D models, so I'm going to select 3D models, and that's all I see. I can also, if I do takeoffs and for, you know, and I don't finish, I'm going to come back later and finish it. Instead of me looking for the sheet that I was in, I can select this option, which will then show me only the sheets or the models in which I've already done a takeoff. And then I have some other ways of filtering and sorting my sheets. But let's go ahead and do this. Let's do a wall takeoff. And I'm going to start with uh, the ground floor here. I'll select it, and you'll see here on the right-hand side a floor plan of a 2D sheet. So we'll first do a 2D takeoff. Now, for me to proceed with the takeoff, on the left-hand side, I'm going to click on this icon, which takes me over to takeoff types. So I want to count some walls here. And I want to do a linear takeoff on my walls. So you'll notice I don't have any takeoff types here, but it does tell me it says click the plus button to get started. So if I select on this, and I'll give this a name, I'll just call this, you know, interior walls. And I can decide, do I want to do an area takeoff, a linear takeoff, a count, or a BIM takeoff? Well, this is a floor plan, so I'll do linear. I can select the color that I want to use. I'll pick this. I can specify the line width. And then I have to specify, and I can put in a description. You know, maybe I describe what this wall is. Three and five-eighths metal stud with insulation and five-eighths inch gypsum wall board on both sides. Primary output. Now I decide on how I want to organize this when I count it. And what do I want to call this when I export it? So, you know, I'll put it in here. I'll just say my wall name here. And then I'll pick a classification system. And if, if you know your classification systems, you can scroll down and you can click on it. But in this case, I'm going to type in the word wall. And I'll look to see I've got, I've got uh, standard foundations. I've got wall foundations. Scroll down a little bit more. I've got exterior wall veneer. Okay, I've got my wall finishes. Actually, what I'll do is I'm just going to type in the word partition because I know that one will limit it. Partition. There we go. And I'm going to use I'm going to use just the C1010 classification system for interior walls. And then I can decide on how I want to count it. Do I want to count the number of walls? And it probably makes more sense to do like the linear feet. And then the formula is going to be based on whatever the distance, when I draw the line, what the distance is. Now that I've defined the classification system, I could hit Start Takeoff. And now it's just a matter of just left-clicking, dragging my mouse down, and you'll notice it says, it says right here, 24 feet, 9 and 3 quarters, which converts into 24.81 linear feet. And if I continue to count, and just drag it down here. I can do my takeoffs. Well, obviously, creating you know these takeoff types is a bit time consuming. So normally, I recommend is you know to create a template project where you have all these takeoff types that are already preset. So, for example, let's go ahead and delete this. And this time, I'm going to use this option that says import takeoff types. And it says project now. With Autodesk, they've not yet configured it where you can have a template, a, a pure template for takeoffs. But what I did was I created a project. I just simply called it 000 takeoff template. And, for, and I called it that so it always shows up at the very top of my list. Then I go to takeoff packages, and I've got a section in here called walls. What I did in this project, under in this package called walls, I created a bunch of takeoff types, and you'll see them all listed here. So now I can say, you know what, let's bring them all in. Now, before I do that, I do want to point out what I recommend is a, you know, maybe helpful with the naming convention is instead of calling it interior wall or three and five eighths metal stud wall, 
name it something very generic. And as you read from left to right, get more specific. So I'm going to say wall, interior, three and five eighths metal stud, gypsum, both sides. Now you notice I've got one here, which is shows a line and this one shows a cube. It all depends. I need one for, for my 2D takeoffs, and then I need one for my 3D takeoffs. And that's why you see it. It looks like it's almost duplicated, but th they are different. Now, they could have the exact same name, by the way. But you can see by the symbol whether, whether it's linear or whether it's a BIM takeoff. But notice all my interior walls are grouped together. All of my exterior walls are grouped together. Well, look what happens when you scroll up a little further. This just says wall CMU. Okay, so if I call it 8-inch CMU and 12-inch CMU, depending on different types of materials, they may not get grouped together. So as I read from left to right, wall CMU 12-inch, that kind of groups them all together. Then you see these other two that just simply says exterior and limestone. Well, they're just going to be floating out there in space. The better bet is to rename those to start with the word wall. And if it's going to be exterior, put EXT and so on. So I'm not going to bother bringing those in, but I'll bring in those nine and I'll hit import. Now to, to do my takeoffs, it's just a matter of just selecting the right wall. So if I select my interior stud, wall interior three and five eighths metal stud, all I have to do is just click here and I'm counting my metal stud. And I'll come back around here and I'll go ahead and do this. And I'll just hit enter. And that quick, I'm able to go ahead and do some takeoffs on, I've got 137 linear feet of interior metal stud walls. Well, what if I pick the wall interior, which says, let's go ahead and compress this. What if I pick this, this wall right here, which says wall interior, two by four wood stud. When I click on it, it's actually, sorry, it's actually gonna count the number of sheets of gypsum wall board I need, how many wall studs, how many top plates, how many bottom plates. So I've actually got it configured to actually break that up, that wall, simply, instead of just simply call it a wall, now I can break it up into its different pieces and parts. And I'll show you the formula here in a minute, but I'll go ahead and I'm gonna draw one wall. So you, what you wanna do to draw a wall is you, or excuse me, do a, a takeoff, is you highlight it so it turns blue. Once it's blue, now you simply come over here and you left click, drag your mouse down, and let go. And if you notice, it calculated I needed um, gypsum wall board. It says uh, 24.86 linear feet. And that doesn't make sense. It should be a count. So I need to fix that. Uh, right here, uh, my bad, this is the entire wall. My bad, right down here. Gypsum wall board, four by eight sheets. It can't calculate the number of sheets because something is missing. And I'll show that to you in just a second. But it did calculate the number of studs. It calculated the linear feet of my top plate and my bottom plate. Now, you'll notice right here when you hover over this, this actually tells you what you need to do to fix this. It says, can't calculate quantities. Use inventory or detailed takeoff mode to enter required inputs. So there's something that's missing for it to calculate the number of sheets of drywall. Now. If I, if I edit this, I'll show you the formulas. So here's the name of my wall. Here's the color, the primary output. Okay, this is, this is the name that I wanted to call it. In other words, I dropped off wall interior. I just have it call it two by four with chips on both sides. But then down here is where I'm doing the calculations to calculate the amount of material. If I click on gypsum wall board, I first gave this a name. That's what you see here. Then I specified the classifications uh, where I want it classified. I specified a count. I wanted to count the number of sheets. And then I put in the formula, distance times height divided by 32 
you know, four by eight sheet is 32 square feet. So I divide it by 32. And then since I want wall board on both sides, I said times two. What's missing here is the height. I have to specify what the height of the wall is. So I'll put in there 10 feet for the height of the wall. When I do my other takeoffs, now it will be able to calculate the correct height of the wall. For my wall studs, here's the formula. Distance divided by 1.33 plus 1. You know, where did I get these formulas? I just Googled it. You know, other people can, uh, companies can have their own formulas. So you can put in the formulas however you want them to put in here. But these are some typical formulas that I found. So what I'll do here is I'll save it. And if I now select on that two by four um, wood stud, if I draw it now, and I'll do it over here, and I'll hit enter, you'll notice it actually counted 15. So for this sheet, it actually counted that there's 15 sheets. But I still got a little warning here. And the reason for that is it did not go back and correct the first one. So it didn't make an update to that. Now I could delete this and I could redo it, but I do want to show you where they, what they put here for a message on what to do. It says here, can't calculate, use inventory or detail takeoff mode to enter in the required inputs. Well, notice right down here, it says inventory. So I'm going to pick on that. And I'm going to maximize this to fill up the screen. So here's my classification system. I'll go to C10 interior. I'm going to go to C1010. And then here are my, my walls that I put in. And here's the one that has the errors. I'm going to click on it. And if you notice, it's still, it's having problems calculating the quantity here. If I select on that, now it's showing me, okay, you got the, I, I've counted that wall twice, but this one's missing the wall height. So I can put in a wall height here. So I could put in 10 feet, or maybe I'll put in eight feet. I could put in a different wall height. Notice the quantities change. I come in here and I change that to 12 feet. Now I need 19 sheets. So you can make an adjustments here in the inventory. Now, when I go back in here, you'll notice that I've got, I need 28 sheets of gypsum wallboard. Now, you may say, Mark, we've got Excel formulas that as long as we get the length of the wall, we will use our Excel formulas to calculate the amount of gypsum wallboard and the number of studs. Fine, you can do that. But if you want the system to do it here for you, you can, you have that option too. So more than optional on how you want to do that. But the point is, I am able to get some pretty detailed takeoffs uh, here within the 2D mode. Okay. I'm going to come back up here to Sheets and Models, and let me show you how we might do that in 3D. Now, one thing worth mentioning, notice this takeoff. I did a takeoff on this door. Excuse me, take that back. I did a wall takeoff but I have a door opening. My formula does not calculate based on any openings right now. Obviously with a door, you need a couple extra two by fours on both sides. You need some two by fours, a header above it. So there's some additional calculations that have to happen that I kind of have to add to my 2D takeoff so it could calculate the quantities properly. But if I go over into a 3D model, the 3D model has a level of intelligence. Remember in 2D, I had to tell it how tall the wall was. And maybe some of my, and, and I'm going to have walls of various heights. Well, in the model, they should be the correct height. They should be of various heights. So I'm currently looking at a 3D Revit model. This Revit model was used to produce those 2D sheets, by the way. But if I decide to do a takeoff here, now it's just a matter of coming down to here and saying, all right, I want to count my 
my interior walls. Now, one way to do it is to come in here and start hiding, you know, hiding or um, hide, hiding objects until I can get to the walls that I want to count. But that can be really tedious to work on. Right down here, we've got this button, and it says Form Clusters. When I click on that, it breaks the model up into different categories. And I come right down here, and here's all my walls. All of my walls are here. So if I touch on a wall and I right click and I look at its properties, it tells me right here some information about that wall. That is a metal stud wall, three and five eighths, five eighths chip on both sides. Total width is four and seven eighths. Well, if I right click on it, I can come down here and I could say select all. When I do that, this wall is used throughout my project. And if I take a look right now, let's rotate this a little bit. There's openings for the, my doors and windows in those walls. So I can get some pretty accurate calculations, at least for wall area, to help me determine or use, use formulas to help me determine number of studs, amount of insulation, amount of vapor barrier. But all of those walls right now, I've selected. Now I want to count them. So I'll come up here and I'll hit plus. And notice right here, it automatically knows the name of that wall. I'm going to say, all right, and it automatically selected as BIM. Okay, whenever you count that wall, change that color to orange. And then I have to come in here and I have to specify the primary output name, classification, C1010. C1010. There we go. And I'll hit start takeoff. Oops. Uh, I forgot to finish something. Select. Click on it. Right click. Select all. And then I have to, it's found 79, but I forgot to hit the blue checkbox. I'll hit the blue checkbox. And now you'll see all those orange walls are walls that I've counted. And you can see there is a total of 79 of them. And the name of it is the same thing it was called inside the Revit model. Now, I could go through and just keep picking walls that I've already counted, but what I could do, you know, these orange walls are kind of in the way. Come over here and hit the little eyeball, and now they disappear. So basically, as you start going through and counting objects, and I'll pick this, and I'll count it, it will disappear as I start counting it. So it makes it much easier for me to do my takeoffs. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on because let's just say I want to calculate... This, this wall, I use the exact same name it was called by whoever the Revit designer was. But I don't need it called this. I'm just simply going to call it uh, wall interiors metal stud both sides. Now, I can't remember. Let me look. Yeah. So notice this one is calculating the gypsum wall board, the amount of metal studs, metal top plate, bottom plate. So what I could do is simply to reassign these from this object takeoff name to this one. What I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll, I'll select this and I'll say reassign, reassign takeoff. I could also right click and say select, uh, where is it here? Uh, Reassign, uh, here's reassign takeoff. I can do it from here as well. But I'm going to do it right from here. I'm going to grab all of them. So what I'll do is I'll click the three little dots. I'll say reassign takeoff. And instead, I'm going to use this wall interior three and five eighths metal stud. And I'll say reassign. Now you notice the color changes. And right down here now, it's counted 80. And if I click on it, 
I can actually see how many wall board, gypsum wall boards I need, wall studs, top plate, bottom plate, all based on the formulas in which I, I put in there. So. so I won't do any more takeoffs, but very easy to do uh, manual to, to do the takeoffs. Uh, let's just look at the report that gets generated and we'll see that and then we'll be done at least for today. So come back in here. I'll select my inventory. I'll maximize this. I'll do this first by document because you can see right here I've counted walls in my Revit model and I've counted walls on individual sheets and I'm counting the same information metal studs and gypsum wall board top plate bottom plate so I can sort it by document I could do it simply by takeoff type so now I'm quantifying all of my wood studs all my metal studs uh, and then here's another a third type I can do it by classification, which I only have one here. And then I can do it by location, which I have not used location, but um, if I did, I can sort that by location as well. But now it's just a matter of exporting, and I'm going to do this by um, takeoff type. I'll select export. This will generate an Excel spreadsheet that gets downloaded. And should be right here. And so now I'm going to have all my quantities that, um, oops, right here. Sorry. Boom. All my quantities that I, that I've calculated in the project and if needed, I can see every single object that I've counted, and if needed, I can take this and link it to my estimating program to start generating my estimates. So, but for the most part, uh, that's what I wanted to cover for you, that we can do both 2D and 3D takeoffs on your sheets and models. So, are there any questions? Fantastic. Thank you so much for that, Mark. Um, yeah, so at this point, guys, if you want to look at the bottom of your screen, there is a tool, a um, little icon named Q&A. You can go ahead and plug in any questions that you may have. I love that uh, cartoon there, by the way, Mark. <laughs> I don't know where <laughs> I found it, it but... <laughs> I got, I was going to bring up the one here for the questions here. There we go. I, I like the other one better. This one I think gets overused. This little avatar guy. So, hey, you, you know what? I think one of my most common questions that I ask um, experts and maybe it's played out question, but I think it's great to start the conversation. Whenever you have training on this um, with clients, what is kind of like the number one question uh, that you get asked? Yeah, usually the number one question is, you know, is, can we create a template? Um, so we don't have an official template, but we can create a project and make that a template. Next question I usually get deals with, um, you know, how do we how do we work with teams when they don't want to provide us the Revit model because. Doing a takeoff on a Revit model is so much easier. Um, if there's one available, then I would definitely reach out to the teams that are creating the Revit model. Let them know that you want to do takeoffs. Um, there could be paperwork that needs to get signed that says, you know, you're, they're not responsible for, for any inaccuracies and stuff like that. But what's interesting is they're using that model to generate the 2D sheets. So... Um, you know, it's it only makes sense for them to provide you the Revit model. Um, there is one other thing I was going to mention here real quick. What, what I wanted to show you was um, sometimes people feel that it takes a little longer to do a to do a takeoff or get it get it set up. But what I want to show you is an advantage, and this is a good example here. When architects, it's not uncommon that when architects are counting or when they're modeling walls. You know, this architect did happen to make the walls go six inches above the ceiling. 
it's not uncommon where they just draw a wall that goes to the ceiling or to the very deck above it, which may not be correct in the model, but from a floor plan view, it looks the same. In this case, my comment is I can get my takeoffs really quick that all the time that I saved, part of that I could use to review the Revit model. And if I came in here and I saw that this wall was much higher than the rest, I would kind of question it and say, all right, it was, was that a mistake? Was that on purpose? Should all the other walls be taller? You know, maybe this is a security room, a storage room that these walls should go to deck. Um, you can review the models, you know, for accuracy that you can then update your takeoff or contact the designer to say, hey, you know, there's a discrepancy on your floor plan. It shows this here in the 3D model. It looks like this. They don't quite match up. You know, let's let's make sure that the model's correct. Um, so that's that's just a something that I, I want to mention is that we can save time on the takeoff part using Revit, which then we can use to help verify the accuracy of the takeoffs that we have produced. Thank you. I think that was a really really good point. Um, and for for you guys, if you ever think of any questions after the webinar, um, you can absolutely reach out to myself. I can get you connected um, at mscott at asti.com. Um, if you're interested in any consultation, any training, you can also reach out as well. Um, and you can scan right here on the screen for to register for any future webinars. So. Um, I do want to thank you, Mark, for joining us today and giving us that great content. Um, and for everybody else, we hope it was meaningful and impactful for you and your businesses. And we do look forward to seeing you on future webinars. So thank you all. Have a wonderful day. Great. Thanks, everyone.